Greetings, really Clarifiles and Clarifilettes. I got a letter in my email today from Jerry Corton. We've emailed back and forth about the clarinet for quite a while. Um, and I thought I would share part of this email with you because uh, this is a subject that touches us all. Uh, Jerry included a snippet from an article by Stephen Fox, uh, and the snippet says, quote, a mouthpiece with a bore smaller than ideal, which he doesn't define the specific dimensions, smaller than ideal will play sharp up to about A in the second register, that's the A on top of the staff, then flat above that. One with an oversized bore will behave in the opposite way flat up to the same point and sharp above. That is rather a moot point when discussing modern instruments from major manufacturers since virtually all mouthpieces currently manufactured have essentially the same bore within a few tenths of a millimeter. At least it is crucial to consider uh, uh, within, uh, sorry, a tenth of a millimeter at least. It is crucial to consider it, however, when dealing with historical instruments and clarinets with now uncommon bore sizes. Uh, well, first of all, I I, I want to take issue with this. All the mouthpieces are produced with basically the same bore. The bore variations in mouthpieces, even within the same company right now, cause drastic and notable differences in tuning. Uh, just as a good example, and one most of all of you are familiar with is Van Doren produces, of course, their new M models, which is newer, recent uh, models, and the the standard Van Doren that they've always been producing, like you find in the B45 and uh, 5RV and 5RV Lyre and so on and so forth. Uh, and these mouthpieces, these smaller bore mouthpieces that Van Doren has always produced, like the B45 and so on and so forth, 5RV, and the M models will produce a range of differences in pitch. The M models will generally play 20 to 25 cents lower than a standard Van Doren, and even more than that, 30 cents lower, uh, in depending on um, you know the individual mouthpieces. But generally speaking, the M models are larger bore mouthpieces, basically meant to play 440, and Van Doren advertises them like that. Now, a 440 mouthpiece. Well, what's Van Doren been giving us all the rest of the time? They've been giving us a mouthpiece that basically will play at 442. And those are smaller bore mouthpieces. Generally speaking, uh, in terms of specific dimensions, uh, the standard Van Doren mouthpieces are, uh, uh, will range from uh, 582 thousandths to 500 and 85, and then the larger bore mouthpieces, like in the M model, will start at about 589 thousandths, and sometimes they'll be slightly larger, with uh, <clears throat> quite a variation in the baffle shape, because, as I understand it, those things are done by hand. Uh, but this sort of um, triggered a, a response to Jerry, uh, not about mouthpieces, uh, but about clarinet bores. Now, the clarinet bore... Uh, has a central cylinder. The modern clarinet bore is a central cylinder. It starts about the throat A key uh, in the left hand, and it extends down to about the low A flat key. And that central cylinder is going to determine primarily the tuning ratios that you're going to get between the low register. Now we get really loud cars going by. I wish they wouldn't do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, from the, between... Um, it's going to determine the, the tuning ratios between the low register pitches, the Shalyamo pitches, into the second register. So uh, let's talk about that for just a second and its effect on the clarinet, because it also affects the third register. So I respond to Jerry. I said, thank you for your input. No bother at all to discuss this. It is correct that small bore clarinets make especially the throat tones sharp. And the third register pitch is flat, just as Stephen notes in his uh, commentary. <clears throat> the small bore of the R13, for instance, and other 14.65 millimeter bores around that, uh, produce, um, the, they produce 
Uh, third register pitches uh, that are flatter than large bore clarinets in the third register. Okay, yeah, I said that. Producing the notoriously flat high E, F, and F sharp. So all of you who play small bore clarinets, and that would include Yamaha clarinets, uh, uh, buffet clarinets, uh, present day buffet clarinets, and uh, then uh, our clarinet will tend to have, our lyric clarinet will tend to have a little lower uh, and sometimes much lower third register pitches, especially those I just articulated, the E, the high F, and the high F sharp. You don't have that issue with larger bore clarinets, like 14.8, 8.5, and 15 millimeter bores. Because when you get into the third register, those third regi regi register pitches are really well in tune with large bore clarinets. <clears throat> with just a standard Rubank elementary fingering chart, fingerings for those high notes. Well, that's great, isn't it? Yep. So, why not use them instead of the smaller bore clarinets that produce the lower pitches? Um, and by the way, this, the smaller bore clarinets will produce sharp throat tones, but flat third register pitches tending toward that. That's sort of the trade-off. Okay, so why not use those large bore clarinets? Why have we made a mistake by mostly playing small bore clarinets anymore? Not exactly. Let me explain. The reason you don't use large bore clarinets, even though the third register pitches are better, is because the low register tones of the right hand are ex unacceptably sharp. For instance, a 14.85 millimeter bore clarinet will produce a low G, A, B flat, B natural, and C that will vary from 20 to 30 cents sharp in relationship to the rest of the clarinet. So for instance, if you play a low A and then you hit your register uh, key, you'll see that uh, the E that comes out of that low A tone hole <clears throat> in the second register will sound flat in relationship to the low A. So, and sometimes as the clarinet warms up and the right hand warms up, that, that low A is going to be 20 to 25 cents sharp in relationship, not just to that E, but in, in relationship to the rest of the clarinet. And that's probably the biggest defender is the low A, but then the B flat, B natural, and C, and as well as the low G and, and the G sharp, all those right hand low register pitches in the larger bore clarinets are going to be sharp to varying degrees in relationship to the rest of the clarinet as well as their 12th corollaries in the in the second register. I hope you're following this. I wish I had time to make like beautiful charts and stuff like that, but I can't because I'm working for a living here at the age of 74 uh, and I've got to produce clarinets and thank you so much for your orders. So there is, you're sort of between the devil and the deep blue sea here. You've got a larger bore clarinet, which produces very sharp right-hand low register pitches. And then you've got a small bore clarinet, which produces, which produces flat third register pitches. So it's sort of like being between a rock and a hard place. So why choose the small bore clarinet with the intrinsically lower, thir uh, lower third register? Good question. Here's why we choose the smaller bore clarinet over the large bore clarinets of the past. So say, in the past, I'm talking about, say, pre 1950, 1955, 1960. You know, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Okay. So here's why you pick the small bore clarinet. Uh, number one, unlike the sharp low register tones of the large bore clarinet. The third register tones that are flat in the small bore clarinet are much more flexible in tuning. Plus, those fingerings up there, unlike the low register tones that are sharp, they have, you have a multiplicity of choices possible for all those fingerings that produce the same tones. Um, now, let me see if I can explain that. For example, in my fingering book, which is available on our website, by the way, um, you will find from 11 
to as many as 21 fingerings for each of the pitches of the first tetrachord of the third register. In other words, <clears throat> you will find between, when you play from high C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and G, each one of those fingerings and then above are going to have at least 11 or 12 fingerings that you can choose that have different nuances in tone, different nuances in tuning, and different nuances in response. So you have many more uh, alternatives to correct and perfect the tuning of the third register pitches, the first tetrachord of the third register, than you do when you play the low G, low A, and goes, those are pretty much fixed, and the, you know you don't really have much choice at all except to make some adjustment behind your nose. And you can say, well, I can drop my tongue and I can drop my jaw and everything and lower that low A. Well, after it warms up, you cannot lower it enough. But the fact is, is that when you make those changes to lower the pitch of the low A, you also change the color and shape of the note, making it spread and washing out the sound, losing the core and the center in order to adjust for a poorly tuned note because of the larger bore of the 14.85, 15 millimeter, say, clarinets. So what you're doing is you're making uh, a choice because you have more alternatives to be able to more easily play the third register in tune of the flat, the flatter small bore clarinet than you do to play the first register in tune of the sharp uh, larger bore clarinet. So <clears throat> these are things that uh, basically catapulted or made, uh, not the right term, uh, that uh, uh, really precipitated the great change in clarinet playing from 1950 to 1960. By in 1950, most everybody was playing 14.85, 15 millimeter bores. <clears throat> but by 1960, um, almost everyone had adopted the 14.65, um, 14, 14. something like that, uh, bore clarinet that you find in the R13 and, and other clarinets that have that small central cylinder. And the reason is because it was easier to, to figure out how to play the third register pitches, which were flat in tune, at, uh, as opposed to the impossible task of making the proper adjustments for the right hand low register pitches, which tended to be extremely sharp. Okay. So I, anyway, I, to repeat, I said, because unlike the sharp low register tones, of the small bore, or the large bore clarinet, the third register tones of the of the small bore clarinet have much more flexibility in tuning, and a multiplicity of possible fingerings, producing those same tones with a variety of tuning nuances. <clears throat> For example, in my fingering book available on our website, you will find from 11 to as many as 21 fingerings for each of the pitches of the first tetrachord of the third register. So I've explained that. If you can't play high pitches in tune with all those resources that you have for third register pitches, you need to forget the clarinet and take up polo or, I don't know, 43-man Squamish. And so that's my message to you today. This is why that the there was this massive shift to smaller bore clarinets. Now, why... Uh, smaller bore clarinets became acceptable is another video and maybe I'll talk about that. I've actually talked about it in previous videos exactly where in the in the production of, of videos that we have on our website I'm not exactly sure and I don't have time to look it up. But I thought I'd share this with you today um, and um, I hope it helps you in your thinking and understanding of uh, some basic things about clarinet acoustics. And with that, i got to get to work. I've got a bunch of A clarinets to produce. Thank you very much for your kindness for trusting us. We'll do our best to produce really great instruments at a price anyone can afford, for that's our goal. See you later.